we keep referring to the Santorini eruption with good reason. This singular event is responsible for a hell of a lot more than we have ever realized. From this singular episode in history, connections can be made to the biblical narrative of Moses, Plato refers to it as Atlantis, and the Pharaoh of Egypt immortalizes this event on the Tempest Stela and describes it as the gods being displeased because at a distance of 600 miles away from the epicenter, the ancient civilization had no idea it was the eruption of the atomic volcano Thera and the Bronze Age collapsed as a result. But it doesn't stop there. On the island of Santorini, the city dwellings contain many things, including a massive array of pottery with the legendary concentric circles as a representation of the island's original appearance. But in these preserved ruins, something is missing. There aren't any human remains like what we have seen at Pompeii, for example. And this means that the island was evacuated prior to the eruption taking place. The Minoans, of course, had a vast empire that included most of the islands of Greece and the mainland. And it is possible that out of desperation to seize resources, they waged a war with Egypt. It isn't documented properly because the timeline of our understanding of the past is completely all over the place on the matter. For example, from the reign of Amos I, when this event at Santorini was documented, it's separated by a couple of hundred years before they attacked Egypt first under the rule of Merneptah, then under the rule of Ramses III. These people are referred to as the Sea Peoples because it is unclear who they were, only that they came by sea and invaded much of the region. This would have been the actions of a once mighty empire that were displaced by the cataclysm of the Thera eruption, eventually regrouping and looking to prosper once again. In Egyptian text, they are described as a group of Greeks from Anatolia, ancestors of the Etruscans. Anatolia would have been where the people of Santorini may have been evacuated to prior to the eruption. They regrouped and established themselves here, but the need to be closer to the mighty trade ports of the Mediterranean led to the invasion of Cyprus and many other key locations. They would have felt forgotten about and probably received no aid from other empires after their collapse. This would have led to a burning desire to show the world that the mighty Minoans were still to be reckoned with and indeed they were still around so the stories of the pre-cataclysmic would have existed in their folklore. Modern excavation in areas on the eastern Mediterranean suggests a sudden and violent collapse of the civilization that was thriving in the years and months before the mighty eruption on Santorini. Within a few short decades, the domino effect was in full flow and the collapse was complete. From out of the ashes of the Bronze Age, the descendants of the Santorini residents would rise again. From Troy in the northwest to Ugarit on the coast of Syria and southwest to the Nile Delta, unidentified attackers raised and burned international trade centers and port cities. After the assaults, most of the shattered cities were either abandoned or rebuilt only on an insignificant scale. All across the eastern Mediterranean, civilizations that had been shaped by aristocrats and became societies of herdsmen and shepherds. When the fighting was over, entire languages and scripts had vanished. This sudden collapse is one of the most dramatic events in the history of the Mediterranean and many archaeological mysteries still surround it. Homer's account of the Trojan War, which would have been placed within this time of crisis if one accepts the Odyssey and the Iliad, contain at least a kernel of historic truth. The second group of events that connects logically with this historical turning point 
is the invasions of the so-called Sea People. Coming, it seems, out of nowhere and lacking any obvious motive, it was these united clans that so successfully attacked throughout the region. Despite numerous scholarly attempts to identify them, we still do not know exactly who the Sea People were, where they came from, why they attacked, and finally, where they disappeared after their raids. Scholars are even uncertain whether the Sea People's existence was a cause or an effect of the political collapses. Were the Sea People conquerors, pirates, deserters, or refugees? We suggest this was all the result of the Santorini eruption. The displacement of the people eventually led to the retaking of lands hundreds of years later. In this sense, they were all these things. Their memory is but words in a dusty book on a desolate shelf, long forgotten by an apathetic modern world. All that remains are pictures set in timeless stone telling of their attempt to apparently conquer Egypt. In the never-ending struggle of human existence, we don't pick up a whole book, but a burned book with only small sections remaining. The rest of the story, it seems, had no or little significance in the propaganda taking place at the time, and make no mistake, the story we get today from the ancient happenings is in that of ancient propaganda. But that is all there is left, unfortunately, because the victors write history of their victories, not of their opponents' struggle. It is up to us to understand the past. All of us, not the few, but the many. The Sea Peoples were refugees equipped with the means to defend themselves. The Santorini eruption brought starvation. Crops failed. Disease was rife and the Minoans had to look for more prosperous lands. Unfortunately, the lands they tried to settle on belonged to other powerful empires and this led to a complete breakdown in communication. The Egyptians, for example, had no idea Thera erupted. The Tempus Stela describes what happened in Egypt after the eruption, but this was no way known to anyone at the time. The refugees from the fallout would have become a new civilization. This was a time of chaos and of fortification to protect what life had survived. Forts were built, troops were trained, and resources in metal were the base for the protection of each nation. Its importance cannot be stressed enough. Their era was categorized by it. Power was defended by it. The rise and fall of civilizations was defined by it. There was activity of trade caused by the discovery by the mining tribes of the north of Asia Minor and Cyprus of the ores of metals. The methods of extracting metals from the ores and of working them when extracted. They were in search of ore deposits and a better way of life. During this time, the foreign invaders, including women and children, in carts. And there can be no doubt that what we see was not just a military force, but a population on the move. This population was seeking food, wealth, trade, and sustainability. Of course, the timeline of the historicity of these things taking place is incredibly close. The understanding of when these things took place is not accurate in any manner and to establish why all this took place in the first place then you must consider an event so massive so drastic that it forced an entire civilization to move countries it isn't an accurate account but the overview of these things makes more sense than the squeezing and dismissal of things to meet other narratives that are already established the volcano on Santorini exploded with the power of a hundred atomic bombs. The entire region was devastated, and the noise from the explosion was documented in China, over 4,000 miles away. In Egypt, the pyramids were damaged, as well as many temples which Amos I ordered to be repaired and rebuilt.
Santorini itself was abandoned prior to this explosion and we suggest to you that the Sea Peoples were the refugees in the aftermath of such an event. Through time they became increasingly desperate for a sustainable way of life and this led them to the closed door of Egypt where they are described as barbaric tribes of invaders. What do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.